Welcome everyone to another episode of The Spread. I'm your host, Jim Sella, bringing you the best Steelers insider news in the business. I really wouldn't call it insider news. I don't know anybody inside the organization, but it is the best Steelers news out there, anywhere you can find it. Follow us on Twitter, bet underscore the spread. Follow me on Twitter at bet Jim the win. Check out that Facebook page at facebook.com slash bet the spread. As always, keep coming back to YouTube. Share this with all your friends. We should have 10 million subscribers by the end of the year. Bank on it. Anyway, last time we talked, the Steelers had signed middle linebacker John Bostick. Talked a little bit about how it would help the team but not necessarily make them a great team. Bostic obviously no Ryan Shazier, but there's not too many people that are uh, of the caliber of Ryan Shazier. Uh, but the Steelers could not cut Mike Mitchell and Lou Shazier and come in with rookies in both positions and expect to be able to compete for a Super Bowl. I'm not saying it, it's completely impossible, it's just highly unlikely. So they went out, filled the hole with Bostick in the middle. He'll help, especially against the run. And then they go out and sign safety Morgan Burnett, who recently played for the Green Bay Packers. Now a little bit about Burnett. He was drafted in 2010. Green Bay took him. Didn't play a whole lot in his first year. Uh, played four games, 12 tackles, nothing too too exquisite. Uh, in 2011, his second season, he played 16 games, started 16 games, had three interceptions, 78 tackles. Uh, 2014, this guy had 105 tackles. The last three years, though, he's kind of struggled with injuries a little bit. 2015, only played 11 games. 2016, managed 15 games, but last year he only managed to play 12. Uh, hasn't put up big numbers since 2014, so again... Not somebody who's a huge signing. People are talking about this soft safety market and the deal that he got. Definitely a good deal for the Steelers. We'll go over that in a minute. Right now, I'm more concerned with how he fits in on the actual field. Uh, Burnett, he's been a guy who's been very versatile for the Packers. He played both safety positions. He played some slot corner. He played a de facto linebacker in their big nickel and big dime that they like to play out there. So he would kind of line up in the middle of the field as the linebacker. But you'd, you'd have uh, six, seven defensive backs out on the field with your four D linemen. So he's definitely a guy who brings versatility to the Steelers' defense. But again, he's not somebody who's a savior. I don't see this as a long-term answer, especially with the way the contract was structured. I like Burnett. I think he's a good sign. I think it's a good move to get Bostic and him both in there. Both should start at the beginning of the season, uh, barring anything else surprising that happens between now and then um, with other free agents or maybe you know somebody who the Steelers draft comes out and, and blows him away in camp. But you're going to see Burnett start. Now, where is he going to start? That's my next question. I've heard a lot of people say that they're going to move – Sean Davis out of the strong safety position and move Burnett in. I'm fine with that. Burnett's definitely more suited to the strong safety position in the Steelers defense. He's big. He's strong. He can come up to the line of scrimmage. He can help the linebackers uh, stop the run. Somebody that definitely could work hard for the Steelers and do good things in our defense. But where does that leave Sean Davis? Mike Williamson, I believe is his name. I don't know, some guy that I heard on the Mark Madden show. He's on there regularly, but I can never remember the guy's name. He's an NFL writer for uh, Sports Illustrated. He came out and said that he has heard that the Steelers are down on Davis. They're going to plug Burnett into the strong safety role and move Cam Sutton into the free safety role. And this doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, Sutton is a little bit smaller than Davis. Sutton's only 5'11", 188. Davis, I don't know, he's somewhere around 6'1", 200, 200 pounds, I believe it was, 202 pounds I'm looking at right now here on NFL.com. So Davis is the bigger guy. I like Sean Davis. I don't understand why everybody's so down on the year that he had last year. He led the team in tackles with 92. And no, he wouldn't have led the team in tackles had Ryan Shazier finished the season. But he did not, and Davis did lead the team in tackles. He only had three interceptions and one forced fumble. 
So you want to see more big plays out of him. But they were putting him in a position where he he was constantly just trying to stop the run. You're, he wasn't in a position to make plays. That's my problem. So I think moving Davis to free safety is the better plan than moving Cam Sutton. Why do you want to take uh, Cam Sutton, who was a rookie last year, hurt probably about half the year, so he didn't get uh, an entire rookie year even under his belt, now you want to switch him positions and make him the starter on a defense that is supposed to help take you to the Super Bowl? That just doesn't make any sense. You have a second-round pick in Sean Davis, who you've been grooming to be a starter on this team, had a pretty good rookie year, didn't start the whole year, but he did play in 16 games, had 70 tackles and a pick. Uh, people just thought he was going to have such a huge year last year, and he didn't. He just had a solid year. And I think that's where the expectations went too high, and now people were too down on the guy, even though he played well. Uh, did he have some breakdowns at times? Yeah, but so did the whole Steelers' defensive backs. I think a lot of that was on the players and on the coaching staff. They've changed out the coaching staff. They've moved Carnell Lake out. They got Tom Bradley in. I don't see a reason to move all around and play this uh, defensive position merry-go-round and bump save it, Davis to the third safety. That just makes no sense to me. You didn't draft the guy in the second round. You didn't put him out there early in his career to learn how to play, only to bench him for a guy you've barely even seen play last year. I think the much, much better play is you plug Burnett in at strong safety. You plug Davis in at free safety. You let the rookie, whoever you get in the first or second round, I still believe the Steelers are going to go linebacker safety or safety linebacker, whatever order they feel is best. Uh, you can let that guy push for playing time, push Burnett for playing time. So you can go out and draft a strong safety. I, I just, I, I don't see a point in playing all that position merry-go-round. Let Cam Sutton settle in at cornerback. And a lot of people were down on Artie Burns from, you know, a, a subpar I guess second season I want to call it but again didn't even get a whole rookie season under his belt not because of injuries he just didn't start until about halfway through the year so he's really only started a handful over 16 total games in his career let Cam Sutton push him for playing time let Sutton Burns Mike Hilton and Joe Hayden be four really good corners let them do what they do best. Don't change positions. If anything, I'm changing Brian Allen's position. He was a late round pick. He's a converted wide receiver to corner, so he's already, you know, just moving over to the defensive side of the ball. You knew he was going to be a project player. You didn't expect him to be able to come in and start day one or even year two. He's 6'3, 215 pounds. Let that guy go become a safety and play alongside Davis, Burnett, and whoever they decide to draft, or maybe they feel Allen could be a long-term you know, solution to that position. But I'm not moving Cam Sutton there. I don't like, I don't understand this. I don't understand why people want to force Davis out and force Sutton in. It's like people were so high on this third-round pick. Fans, mostly. It's not, I have never seen a Steelers coach yet say that they want to move Sutton to safety. But fans, they just want to force this Sutton onto the field so, so bad. I don't under, I don't get it. Steeler fans like to fall in love with a player in the draft after they read whatever NFL.com or ESPN.com put out on a little blurb or whatever their favorite Facebook post put out there and, and said, oh, yeah, this guy's good. So then they rally behind him and they're like, oh, he's going to be great. Uh, he could be great. He could. I'm not saying he's not going to be. He's probably going to be a good player. I like what I've seen from him uh, in Sutton. But I don't think he's some pro bowler that's going to come in and just take over Artie Burns' spot or just take over Sean Davis' spot. Artie Burns and Sean Davis are first and second round picks, respectively. Sutton was a third round, third round pick for a reason, okay? Not saying he's bad, but he was a third round pick, thought to be a little bit more of a project guy. So I don't quite understand why everybody wants to push him right into the starting lineup all at once. It, it just makes no sense to me. Sutton's going to be a good player. I just think he fits more at cornerback. So I like Davis and Burnett at your safety positions. I like Burns and Hayden starting with Sutton and Hilton helping out. 
and then you're going to have TJ Watt, John Bostick, probably Vince Williams, who I'm really not that big on, and I really would like to see the Steelers be able to draft a middle linebacker and play Bostick and that middle linebacker and bump Vince Williams to number three, but I think I'm in the minority there. Uh, Bud Dupree on the other end for the linebackers. I know Bud needs to come up big this year. There's been some talk about switching sides with him and TJ Watt because Bud might be a little better in pass coverage, whereas TJ Watt's a little stronger against the run. And then, of course, you got Tuitt, Hargrave, and Hayward on your D-line. I mean, that's that's the guys that you are going to go with. I, you're going to live or die with these guys. I mean, you're not going to get anybody else in here. The Steelers aren't going to go out and sign any more free agents. There's not even really any more impact free agents out there. Maybe Eric Reed, the safety, but nobody's even reaching out to him at all because the guy kneeled. So I, this is what you got, guys. I mean, you're, you're going to have to make it work, and I don't really feel like moving Sutton around. I think let him settle in at corner. If anything, you start sliding Allen in now. I know he's just been converted to defense, so it seems like I'm saying – the complete opposite for him is Sutton, where, you know, I don't want to switch Sutton's position because he's young. Well, Allen already has just moved to defense. Sutton has been playing corner his whole life. So that's why I feel like it would be smarter to move Allen. Sutton, let him settle in. He's going to be an NFL corner. Allen, he's a project player. Nobody really knew where he fit in. They just kind of moved him to corner. Yeah, it'd be sweet to have a 6'3", 215-pound corner that can run with wide receivers and jump with them. I'm not saying I'm, I'm down on him as a corner. I'm just saying I would rather see him converted to safety rather than Cam Sutton. Before we go, I want to go over some of the financials for the Burnett deal that I mentioned earlier in the episode. Uh, people were talking about this being... A, what, three-year, $14 million deal, somewhere around there? Three years, 14.35. That's what I'm seeing right here. Okay, so it's a four-year, $14.35 million deal. $2.42 million cap hit in 2018. The cap hit never goes above 6.47 in the three years of the deal. Uh, his signing bonus was only $4.25 million. So in reality, he's pretty easy to cut after the first year. So stay the Steelers like the safety that they draft. They think he can play better than Burnett and they want to get rid of him. They can actually, they would have to eat $2.8 million in dead cap money that would get spread out for the last two years, but they would save $4 million in cap space in 2019. So yeah, it would cost them a little bit, but they would also be able to save a little bit if they feel like whoever they bring in to play behind Burnett can push him or even beat him out, you know, mid-season, whatever it may be. So, although it is a three-year, $14.35 million deal, it's essentially a one-year prove-it deal with the Steelers having the opportunity to have very little... Uh, it's an opportunity for the Steelers to have very little consequence if they decide to cut them after year one. So, they'd eat $2.8 million over two years. 1.4 probably spread over two years is how they would most likely do it and then save $4 million next year. Although the Steelers have a little over $50 million in cap space next year with some of the contracts that are expiring. So I don't really, you know, kind of see that being a big issue. The only other thing I want to mention, J.J. Wilcox, most likely out now with the salary that he makes. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's a little high for a backup. $3.8 I think it is, somewhere around there. $3.5 million, something like that. Um, I just don't see it. You're going to be able to bring a rookie in. Even if your rookie's your first-round pick, his cap hit's not going to be anywhere near that in the first in the first round that late. So probably can say bye to Wilcox unless, unless he's going to take a pay cut. I know they like him on special teams, but we'll see. But that's all I have for you today. Burnett will plug a hole. Bostick will plug a hole. Uh, the Steelers' defense, it's better than it was the day they lost to the Jaguars. But I don't know if it's Super Bowl ready just yet. We'll have to see what they do in the draft. Keep looking ahead. You'll find my mock draft episodes coming up. We're not doing a million mock drafts this year. We're doing one NFL mock draft. And we'll probably mock out the Steelers' first three picks and then throw out some other picks there towards the end. We'll see how it goes. But that's all I got.
Follow us on Twitter, bet underscore the spread. Follow me on Twitter, at bet Jim the win. Check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash bet the spread. Come back to YouTube, click subscribe, share it with your friends. Steeler football season, man, it's closing in. I can't wait.